Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Aaron Alexander Experience Podcast. I am back with my co-host, Alpha Chad, here. I am drinking coffee out of a Taco Bell cup. Now, people might think to themselves, like, oh, Taco Bell, that's not healthy. It's a Diet Coke, all right? I got a Diet Coke. I don't care if it's from a can. I don't care if it's from fucking H-E-B. A Diet Coke is a Diet Coke. So I can show you guys receipts, but that is all that I ordered from Taco Bell. It might have been a Diet Pepsi. I don't remember which one, but I did not eat the food. I'm eating incredibly well right now. Um, So, guys, welcome back to the show. We are going to be putting out this episode this coming week and, and, and every week moving forward. We are going to put out brand new episodes of this podcast. Alpha Chad, I don't know if you noticed, but I actually forgot to upload the podcast this past week. Did you notice that? Uh, no, I didn't know when your schedule was or anything. It was gonna, so it was gonna be every Sunday. We put out the first episode right. two Sundays ago, and then I, I legitimately yeah. it was like Sunday night. And because we have not done the podcast for so long, it just has not been a part of my life. Wow. I like just forgot to put it out. But that being said, now the other episode we did, it's already ready to go for this coming week. So, so we're good to go. Guys, listen, the point is I forget things sometimes, okay? But now, now that I am so excited about this podcast, it is going to be a top priority. So we are going to just bang this out every single week and have you guys here to hopefully help you to, you know, just navigate life, navigate the world. I do eventually want this to get so big that we can just turn it into pure comedy. That's my goal eventually. But for now, I'm going to, you know, give you guys wisdom and give you guys sort of the, the lessons that I've learned along the way from going from morbidly obese down to borderline anorexic thin back up to being morbidly obese and sort of repeating that cycle over and over again. And so I think that there's a lot of a lot of value here. Alpha Chad, where are you at with Law of Attraction these days? Better than ever. I'm, I'm, I, look, look, check out my bling, bro. Check out my sick bling. Diamonds and gold. <laughs> Dude, for anybody that's listening on Spotify or elsewhere, get on YouTube right now. That is incredible. All right, so it's not actually real. It's like $30. But I am manifesting some really uh, other amazing things in my life right now. Uh, I manifest an easier job. I manifested a uh, weird connections, man. Just like weird connections with people I never would have even guessed. Just life's feeling mm. better than it's ever been. And um, I was in a dark place for a while, right? So right now I do like uh, a delivery service. And uh, while I'm driving around, I have uh, I was very manic for a while, going through some uh, intense feelings. And these past like eight months, I've just treated it all like a big meditation. I bought AirPods. I started listening to Abraham Hicks. I started just listening to like... A lot of attraction stuff, and every time I find myself all off kilter, I just go back to the stuff, and it just brings me right back to where I need to be mentally, and then things just slowly get better as they get better. So, Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And I think that that's incredibly important. I'm a big fan of constantly brainwashing yourself and, and you, you know, listening to music that inspires you in some way or, or fuels you with some emotion, listening to Law of Attraction, listening to this podcast – I'm a huge fan of this, and the reason why is because the world is already brainwashing you, whether you are willing or not. You don't actually have a choice in whether you're brainwashed or not. Every single day, I forget what the study says, but you see thousands of advertisements a day. You are constantly being bombarded. You might think that you're logging onto social media to look at what your friends are doing, but again, more advertisements, more news, more ideas and concepts. So you're being brainwashed and if right now you're not liking the way your brain is operating then you have to brainwash yourself in the direction that you want to be brainwashed through taking in a lot of this this positive material have you have you found that because i used to deliver as well i used to deliver pizza and that was something i loved about the job was being able to basically use that time to listen to things that i felt were bettering me towards my next position have you kind of done the same yeah, I mean, the law of attraction thing is really just like the war on focus. It's like, you know, I think about pessimism. I have friends that are pessimistic, and 
it's like, you know, oh, you know, like statistically this shouldn't work. So I shouldn't even bother taking this risk or that risk, you know. Um, and it's like, I think in life when you want to overcome something, you got to just be all in on the the solutions. And when you are, you find that like the road is very lonely and no one's even focusing that hard on those solutions. And it's almost easier to win than, you know, the people who love statistics would tell you. And it's about, it's all yeah. about focus. And then what's even worse nowadays is in society you have this crazy war on focus, which is like your phones and everything in the world wants to distract you. And so if you don't have any original thoughts, um, you're fucked. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And there is, and, and you know, whether it's, whether it's dating, fitness, business, whatever it is that, that what you just described there, these, these people that just don't have any belief Right. So the pessimist that you're that you're talking about of where it, this is not going to work out. So why even try? That is that is basically the entire game. That is that is basically the entire game. I, I forget who it is. It may it maybe was Tate. Maybe it was Grant Cardone, but I believe it was Tate. I think Tate said once there are people who are significantly dumber than you making significantly more money than you. Uh-huh. They're retarded. Dude, some of these people, and you can say, like, you can be like, oh, well, if they're so retarded, like, how do they make all this money, whatever. No, like, they are full-blown, like, borderline retards, but but something happened along the way. A supportive parent, uh, too dumb to even see the pessimism, a friend that they grew up, like, something made them believe. Sports, I don't know what it was, but yeah. something made them believe that they could achieve everything that they set their mind to, so they just went for it. And so all of these sort of... You know, these people that think that they're so intelligent, but yet they can't find a way to hack the mind in order to just take some action. It's a massive cope. It's a, it's a massive, massive cope. And this is why the law of attraction is so important. I love uh, I love telling that story about when I was sitting there at the on the porch of the house that you're in right now. And I was sitting there and there was I, I, I still believe he was probably an OSU football player. But this black guy just comes around the corner and uh from over there on the side of Dua Lipa and he's coming on the corner and dude and he's like pumping his fist he's got headphones on he's like it's my fucking year it's my fucking year it's you baby it's you he's just like and he's just in his own world and he's sweating and he has his shirt off he clearly just ran miles or something and he's just fucking maniacally talking to himself and dude that's some shit that like I've always done for years I've had to do it because I have had external and internal just filled with so much self-doubt and i think everybody is so if you're not drowning that shit out regularly you are absolutely doomed and that leads me to another sort of line of thought here there are two ways to drown out the self-doubt one is extremely detrimental to your health and the other is extremely positive for your health but it's more difficult so the easy one is drugs and alcohol Drugs and alcohol and cheap dopamine and, you know, blasting caffeine and just substances in general to give you these false sense hoods. And sometimes those substances actually are beneficial, um, but they're, they're supposed to be used, I believe, in very short term bursts. And then the more positive way of drowning out those negative thoughts and that, that, that self-doubt is like what we're talking about here, brainwashing yourself, amping yourself up going out and actually taking some action, reminding yourself that, hey, this action is going to be difficult, but over time I'm going to get better and better at it. Focus. It's all focus. Like, um, I forget, I think it was Teal Swan, actually, who talks about, like, masculine versus feminine traits. And -hmm. focus is one of them. Focus is definitely a masculine trait. You know, and as guys, like, want to level up and just do all these things, like, your focus is paramount. It's just everything. It is. Yeah, it definitely is. And um, and yeah, to anybody who's listening to this right now who you guys are just not doing shit, you're not going out, you're not even working out, you're not making any cash, you got to just start somewhere, right? It's like you got to just, you got to get the ball rolling somewhere. And I was talking to, who was I talking to? I was talking to Igor. You remember Igor, right? Yeah. I was talking to Igor the other day. So I did like 13 days of the carnivore diet 
and um, and I and, and and then I did a, a cheat day, a planned cheat day, where it was like, okay, I'm gonna eat like a shit ton of carbs. I'm gonna like, I'm gonna fucking you know, uh, try to reset the metabolism, and then right back to it. And so now I'm back on like day four since the cheat day, and um, it was so insane, bro. Because the day after the cheat day, after just eating, after getting so much clarity, after about like maybe like seven eight days of the of the carnivore diet. And then after the day after the cheat day, I actually went out to film infield and Igor was filming for me. And, um, bro, I was just so fucked up mentally. Legitimately. Oh. I just, my sleep that night was horrific. My stomach was kind of like, there was this weird like ball of pain I hadn't felt in, in forever. Um, the, the brain fog was, was insane. And, and it was just wild. And I said to him, and so I'm out there and I'm actually struggling. I'm really like, oh, I don't even want to be here. <laughs> even if I did go talk to that girl, I don't even know if I could like get a full good, you know, interaction done. I mean, I just felt like shit. And then I said to him, I said, I said, bro, I just realized something like this is how everybody feels all the time. This is it. Like all these, all these guys who are going out and they're just, and, and they're just sort of, you know, going to just kind of keep living this shit lifestyle that they're living. And then they go out to do game. They're like, I'm going to go out and pick up chicks. I'm going to talk to women. And they're out there and they're just mentally foggy. They're fucking tired. Their brain is not sparked up. There's no spark to the brain whatsoever. It's because you are already living at such a low vibrational state that now you're going to go try to perform a high vibrational act. And it's not going to happen. Those, those two worlds cannot, they, they, they just can't mix. They really can't. So you guys have to really start with some of the absolute basics. Some of these terrible fucking habits that you've got right now. You know you're drinking too much. You know you're chain smoking the ciggies, the vape, whatever it is. Like jerking it too much, jerking it in the morning, laying in bed in the morning. It's like you got to do something to get that vibe on point. And, and, and to, to sort of even piggyback on that further, again, if you look at what your vibrational set point is now, like where are you at right now on the scale? Let's just say it's, you know, the scale is from zero to 10. Like if you're at a two, it might be completely impossible to perform the acts of what a five could perform. However, can you jump up one step? Probably. So now you're performing three acts. Now you can perform four. Now you can perform five. And then you just keep up leveling that vibe until you get to a point where the acts of a one, two, three, and four are just so foreign that it's just, it doesn't even, then those also can't mix. Yeah. I saw you writing. A, Did you have something good to add? Uh, Yeah. I mean, you know, it's just uh, kind of a self note too, but it's just like, it's all momentum. You know, it's like... I remember when I started studying the actual vibrational scale, which does tie into like law of attraction stuff. I remember you and I made a video on that like years ago. Um, and yeah, it's like every emotion has a new platform and then every platform that you go on top of that emotion just brings better emotions to your life. And it's a momentum. And you know, I used to just feel angry and I would have to struggle with anger for a few months. And then I learned how to process anger and I would go up to the level above it. You know, and you, like you fall back down. But then like lately, man, like I just feel so many good emotions and I've really honed in on what I need to be feeling on a day to day that now I can just wake up and jump to that. But that happened from a momentum of uh, just thinking about these things all the time and, you know, again, focus. But yeah, just like kind of bring my attention to the right things and not focusing on the wrong things. I think people don't realize that most of their focus is unconscious and just because it's unconscious doesn't mean it's not attracting mm, yeah and so like all your unconscious stuff is like bringing things to your thought like i can dude huh, i hate saying this because like it doesn't, it doesn't sound real but like i can see people's thoughts like i can see what kind of thoughts they're thinking based on like like if i just watch a person walking down the street i could tell you like what their thoughts are like on a vibrational scale like i could tell you if they're thinking positive or negative and it's like it's not like fucking magic but it's like like anybody could probably do it but it's just like because i've noticed it myself i'm seeing it everywhere and yeah man i mean just that 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 shit just affects everything it affects everybody it affects your life affects everything yeah yeah, and I think it's just so, I think that oftentimes being pessimistic is a massive cope as well. And 
you know, it's um, it's it's uh, this is just another reason why I just don't know if, if my content or the podcast will ever truly blow up or whatever, because I think that a lot of people spend a lot of time sort of placating to their audience in a way, um, mm. kind of making the audience feel good about themselves or I don't know, more empowered or something. But I, I view most people who are being pessimistic. I, I view them as just massively coping um, yeah. and, and just being fucking losers, just being, being like absolute losers. Like I can't even be around. I, I fucking hate <laughs> being around pessimistic people. Um, everybody is free to, to feel how they want or whatever, but we're not going to be good friends. If I have a good friend and he yeah. all of a sudden becomes like very pessimistic, I'm sure. I don't know. Maybe we grew up together or something. So I'll always keep you in my life in some capacity, but like, we're not going to be good friends anymore. It's just all there is to it because because being pessimistic is just a massive cope because you get to sort of opt out of a lot of difficult, hard work. You get to sort of pin a lot of your failures onto the negative nature of the world around you. Uh -huh. It's not that I'm not doing approaches and doing the difficult things and getting in shape. It's that women are all broken. Um, mm -hmm. It's not that I made a lot of negative decisions and that I could pivot right now, but I know it's going to be incredibly difficult. It's not that. It's that capitalism is evil and the world is falling apart and everything is fucked. So that's, that's, that's what a it lack is. Of a, you could say it's a lack of yeah, accountability. Yeah. It is, but they, but they also know what they're doing. People that, people that get this way, they, they kind of they know what they're doing. And uh, I think deep down they do know and, and they know that they are accountable, but it's just sort of a way to cope with the pain. And so mm. I'm all for I'm all for coping with pain. I think that there's a lot of different ways people can cope. I think life is incredibly difficult. However, when what you're doing to cope with the pain starts affecting everybody around you, then people are going to start distancing themselves from you. If you're drinking every night alone to like numb the pain of your life, I would hope that you solve that. And I hope that that, you know, I hope you, you cure that, but that's even that is different and better than doing that and causing harm to others, driving around drunk, starting fights with people, causing shit with your girlfriend or your wife or whatever. It's like, that's where the shit starts to get detrimental. And that's what people do with, with, with negativity for sure. Um, and again, dude, I've caught myself. I've caught myself being so negative in the past. And we have to, we all have to fight this. We all really, really have to fight this, this desire to, to just be coping with negativity. Otherwise you're fucking doomed. Do you ever cope yeah. with negativity? Uh, hardly, but I'm, I'm a weirdo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, do you I feel just, like you, I don't know. do you feel like you ever did? Do you feel like you ever did or not really? Um, dude, I've always just been so positive, man. Like, there's been times when I'm, like, down, right? Like, definitely. But usually what I find that is, is I think that reality is not bendable enough as it is. It's like, it's like, um, I always fight to try to figure out how things can be flexible. And if I'm really down, that means I'm stumped. Like, that means, like, I don't know how to think about this in a way to make it you know, I, that that to me that means that I'm focusing too much on reality, and I'm not thinking about like reality breaking or creating my reality. That means I'm thinking about like what is, and I'm only looking at what is, instead of like what could be, and what I want to do. Mm. And I think that's actually something too. We could even transition a little bit. It's like people are so good at looking at what's what, and a lot of negative people. You tell them you're negative, and they go, "No, I'm I'm realistic." That's what they love to say. Every negative yep. person loves it. They love to say they're realistic. Well, yes, you're realistic because you look at what's real, but you want to be right more than you want to be happy, right? It's like giving up needing to be right over happiness. And then suddenly what you can do is you can, you can say the statistics. Statistically, 20% of businesses like mine succeed and 80% fail. You could say you could bring me that statistic or something. You could say that. And then now if you're thinking – if you're not thinking about reality – you're you're thinking about that twenty percent. You're thinking about succeeding, right? You're thinking about doing it consistently. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know if I was to toss a basketball across a, a court, statistically it would miss. But if you practice, you hit every time. 
You know, like these guys, they shoot their basketball and they land in it every time. How's that work? Statistically, it should be landing in the stands and the, why does it always land there? Because that's where they're focused. That's where they put all their training and their execution and every, like it lands in the hoop every time. Like, so it's like you, you, you have to build so that it can get to the solution more consistently. And then you don't have to worry about reality like that. You don't have to worry about like yeah. things aren't working, you know, then people like me don't succeed or whatever. It's like. I think it, like game is like a microcosm of it all. Like when you're out in the club and you're talking to girls, there's a million thoughts you could have about like this shouldn't work. You know, I'm gonna go up to mm -hmm. the girls dancing on the table. I was talking to all these girls that were rejecting me that weren't dancing on the table. But it's like, yeah. did you ever think that maybe talking to the one that's dancing on the table was more likely to happen? Right. Right. Like it's like these. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I was I, I was just gonna say it's it's what what you said at the at the beginning of that was the 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 whole thing about looking at everything for what it is versus what things could be, yeah. right? And that's 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 massive. That's so that's so true. And that is yeah. the the yeah. Go ahead. People forget that we're still writing history. Like they forget mm. that like it's still being written. And so you can have all the pessimism in the world, but tomorrow is, you have, tomorrow's free time. Like, you have 24 hours tomorrow that didn't happen yet. You know, like, we're still writing it. Yeah. And so I think people act like the story's over because it's easier to, you know, succumb to that cope, as you say. But in any kind of success and anything that's meaningful, it's like, yeah, it's, it's probably going to require a little focus. And, uh, and yeah, you're going to need to, like, you have, you have free time. You have the time to work on it, which is great. That's a, that's a blessing. Count your blessings. Be, be uh, appreciative of everything and, and put yourself in the way that you want to feel tomorrow, today. You know, there's so many things you can do. Yeah. Yeah. And there is that, there, there is that tendency as well to, I, I love that, the, the idea of, of just seeing everything for what it is versus what, what things could be. That's such a yeah, that's such a core foundation of what I what I teach when it comes to game is being excited about what could happen versus being afraid of what could go wrong. There's this great quote, I believe it was I want to say it was Napoleon that said glory is fleeting, but mediocrity is forever. And so okay. There's just this kind of, there's this malaise. There's this sort of just mundane energy that I find that so many guys have today where they've just completely succumbed to the idea that they are going to have no impact on anybody or anything around them. They have completely succumbed to the idea of being an NPC, of being a background character, of trying to go through life with their head down and try to not attract any attention to them whatsoever. And I just think that if you made it this far into this podcast, you really do got to shake things up. You got to shake things up in some fucking way. And this is why I'm actually a big proponent sometimes of, uh, of drug use and alcohol use. Sometimes I look at some of these guys who are, who are just sitting at home right now every single night not doing anything, I'd, I would literally love for them to go on some bender. I would love for them to go fucking running around town, go to the local watering hole, get fucking plastered, fucking talk to old people, meet new people, sit at a... T like, dude, if you sit at a bar and just keep getting drunk, people are going to start talking to you. Like, oh, you sure you need another one, buddy? Like, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. Like, whatever. <laughs> Go, like, literally smoke cigarettes on the patio. Ask for a lighter. Even if you already have one, ask for a lighter. Bum a cigarette. Like, have some fucking life experience. And I, I'm not, I'm, I'm really not even kidding. Again, this is like the only, like, self-development-esque podcast where someone's going to be like, go have a bender. But I am telling you, there is nothing worse. But, but I'm really focused right now on uh, maximizing my morning routine. You're focused on being a fucking dork who has no bitches, who has no life, who is making no impact, who's having no fun. Dude, like... Man, I have had a lot of fuck-ups in my life, but I've had a lot of goddamn fun. 
and I will continue to fuck up, but I will never look back at my life and be like, damn, that was boring. And that's all I really care about. Like, I guess everybody sort of have these, has these different values and different things that they care about in this life. But like for me, dude, I don't know, bro. You offer me a yeah. billion dollars and a boring life versus I die broke as fuck, but had a lot of fun. I think I'm taking, well, I'm for sure taking fun. And I think most people are. So like, go do something, you fucks. Jesus Christ. I would, I, I love it. I, I would encourage, uh, I would encourage people to ask what they think the expectations of outcomes are so that you can figure out what you actually believe. And you, what you realize is there's a line that you can push, right? And so you need to do things you're proud of or you need to do things that belief break. And so, you know, if you're going to do something that's outside of you right now, right, outside of what you would realistically do or what, you, what your expectations of yourself are, if you're going to actually do that, then you need to make put these pushes to do that and then... You need to be ready for when that feeling comes up of like, I don't believe this can happen, but holy crap, like what if? And then you could start breaking past those barriers where suddenly you go up to a girl and like, they all love you, right? All the chicks love you. And you're like, what? Like, how did that happen? I, I didn't even feel good that day, right? Or, or you start that business or you do that thing and it just, it worked out, but you, all you did was you just took the right actions and you said, fuck it. I'm just going to take the right actions. And if you push like that, if you're consistent like that, you'll start to see things break and you'll have these crazy breakthroughs where you're just like, and we, we see this on boot camps all the time, but you'll have these crazy breakthroughs where you're like, I didn't think I could make that much money. Like when was the, remember the first time somebody handed you money for like yeah. doing coaching? Yeah. How much money was that? Mm -hmm. It was like a hundred dollars even? 90. It was 90. Yeah. You, but you were still like, this is crazy, right? Like that was crazy. Yep. Yep. It's it's like everything is a we get into these habits where we go to work and we do the same thing every day. And it's the same repetition. And you start to believe that that reality is the only one. And, you know, again, when, when I talk about like reality bending or, you know, what could be. It's it's a lot closer than you think, like what could be is a lot closer than than you think it is. You have to recognize what you've been kind of hypnotized into the into what's in front of you as if that's the only thing that exists. But you got to do things that could potentially break that. And then what, right up when you get to that point, just take the right action, keep quiet, and let it push past. And when it does, you'll have these breakthroughs where you realize, what the fuck was I doing working a 9 to 5? What the fuck was I doing not talking to women? What the fuck was I doing all this fucking shit? I couldn't believe I was doing that. And that's why there's such a weird gap between the pessimistic and the optimistic. It's because they stop believing or they become believers. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and also too, I mean, it's God, there's like so much I want to say there, but also, I mean, when you talk about the right actions, right. For these guys to be taking the right actions, I also do believe that for many of these guys listening right now, for many of you guys listening, the right actions need to start outside of work. So there's a lot of guys out there that have like a job that at least, like pays the bills and and then some pays the bills and yeah. like they can eat decent. They're, they can't do a five star restaurant four nights a week, but they can eat well. They can you know, the car is OK. Everything's fine. So. And then I'll talk to these guys and again, you know, no bitches, no fun, no experiences, no nothing. And they're like trying to start an e-com store. And I'm like, oh, okay, that sounds cool, whatever. And then we talk again a year later, and they're, like, trying to start an e-com store. Stop with the e-com store. You're not going to do it. You're not going to start an e-com store. Stop. Like, <laughs> stop with this fucking fantasy that you're also going to be some, like, successful entrepreneur without any track record of succeeding at anything in the past outside of what was just somewhat expected of you when it comes to, like, getting decent grades and, like, getting this job. Like... Dude, outside of work, start living better. So right now, when you walk into a room and people see how you're dressed, do they just immediately think this guy's a fucking dork, right? Like this guy, he just looks like a dork. His clothes are always a little too baggy. He just doesn't look like anybody. There's no impact there. Um, start dressing different. I don't even want to say better. I just want to say like very different. 
and you can use TJ Maxx, you can use Goodwill, you can use anything. Clean up your fucking house. Do you have stupid artwork? Do you have no artwork? Does your place just like, does it just look like shit? Does your fucking car look like shit? You know that I notoriously always have a very clean car, Alpha Chad. Always. There's nah. never a speck of trash. There's never, a, you've uh, never seen a, a speck of trash in my vehicle. Uh, hey, I'm actually, gonna go and, uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute. I'm going to go ahead and mute you uh, real so quick. The while reality I, uh, is that. Continue. So anyways. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, but for real, like, like th this is what I mean. It's like outside, e like outside of work and people even use, and this is again, this is going to be, this is very, very controversial. I'm aware of this and people are not, people aren't going to agree with this or whatever, but like. Bro, like most people are not meant to be entrepreneurs. It's just a fucking fact. If everyone was meant to be an entrepreneur, everyone would have a business. No, there's a reason why every big business has thousands and thousands and thousands of employees. It's just the nature of things. It's how it fucking goes. So like also, how can you with your current job, how can you start living a great life? And are you coping, avoiding the the approaches, the making new friends, the creative hobby, the gym. What are all the things you're actually coping, avoiding, but you're coping with like the e-com store that you think you're going to start or the fucking marketing agency and you don't know dick about marketing. You're just fucking in some Jason Capital course thinking you're going to become the next DM appointment center. You're not. So like go do things that are going to spark up your brain. I believe that the ROI on 20 approaches a week and four days at the gym, I believe that the ROI on that is way, way higher than any supplement you're ever going to take and any fucking e-com store and any bullshit you're going to do. It's like just getting out and like taking some action and doing some real world things. Put yourself around a girl who's fucking nipple piercings. You can th see through her white fucking tank top. I mean, let me ask There's you something higher. There's higher ROI on that than on fucking Dave Asprey's whatever fucking vitamin. Go ahead. What um Yeah, because I'm I'm just thinking what what uh what's wrong with the e com store? What like why can't somebody believe in the e com store? Expand on that. So so because what the e com store is doing for most of these guys is it is putting them even deeper and further into their sort of non-action taking non-living of life so i have You're now saying they're not really just doing it. been yeah they're not doing it they're not doing it okay. yeah they're Got not it. doing it they're pretending to do it i now have just been around I'm, I'm just older i'm wiser i've now been around a lot of through evolution daily through my old you know opal group through just people i met, met in columbus and here and all i've just now been around the block a lot and i've just heard it all all of these guys that i meet are working on an app they're working on a business they're working on a fucking whatever and then we run into each other again a year later we catch up a year later oh, i'm still working on the thing what are you working on no you're not you're watching gary v videos and you think that you're working on something you're just staying at home more pretending to work on something you're not um so I just view that as a massive cope. Now, yeah, if you're the fucking rare 1% that's, like, going to really do some shit, then fucking do it. But stop talking. Stop fucking pretending that you're working on it. It's the same thing with game. It's the same, it's the same fucking shit. Like, stop telling me you're, like, working on, oh, yeah, I'm working on, like, getting better with chicks. What are you, what are you doing? Well, I'm really focused on online right now. Are you? What are you focused on? What do you mean? You're, <laughs> when somebody tells me I'm focused on online, what the fuck are you focused on? Uh, the, go get the photo shoot on Saturday. Okay, these are the best photos you're ever going to get. Read the 20 blogs on how to create a good bio. Create that. Blast out messages. What are you focused on? You're not focused on anything. I think this would be I a perfect quit. time. I honestly quit. I quit. No, I'm retiring, man. I'm fucking so done with these people, dude. <laughs> these guys don't. These, you know what? You know what my biggest. You know what my biggest frustration is? Is the world does not deserve me. I have given myself to the world. I went down a, a rare vein of the internet, which was PUA. Um, I believe that I have 
tapped that market to the to the most that I really can. I'm very passionate about it, but I should have went a different route. The world, the fact that that my words don't receive millions of views shows that that the world is doomed. But anyway, <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. What was the I think? Thing? I think. I think. <laughs> sorry about all your uh, feeling of doomed. Um, I think because we started with law of attraction and beliefs, it would be a good time now to talk about a couple things that are more practical. Like, you know, if you do want to start your e-com business, get practical. You know, one of my favorite quotes from you, and you, I, I say this to myself all the time, is speed is everything. Right? Mm -hmm. You remember that? You remember telling me that? Speed is everything. Just like you just said, you know, watch the e-com business on Monday. Like, do these things quick and fucking chart your fucking progress and think about the, 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 the weekly schedule and, like, make sure that this, this one result is going to get done by the end of the week. Like, results, results-based uh, practicality will get you your e-commerce business. And, you know, what I love about you is that you are very, very, very practical. You've shut out, like people you've shut out things you've you've optimized your 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 supplements your, your what you eat your time like so many things and you know i think the answer to a lot of this just like mental masturbation if somebody's let's say they're watching gary v and they really do want to do something right uh look have a vision board for sure for beliefs to get out of your job and to think about like that future that you want definitely have a fucking vision board but then get practical. What am I going to do this week? What's getting accomplished? Like what's one result that's getting done this week that like actually like if I got that result done this week, I would go, yeah, I'm on the path. Like practicality, these things do need to be met with practicality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and start recognizing as well when you guys are setting goals that are, again, just the easiest things you can possibly do. If you have goals right now of, of some sort of a business or fucking whatever, and on your list of things to do is like research something, you're coping. You're a fucking coper. Copy fucking cope. Like if you're <laughs> if, if on a list of, of on your phone or on paper, it literally is like research, whatever. It's like, no, 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 no. You're again, this is just so common, dude. It's just so common. Um, guys How about that instead are of research. Just, Maybe instead of research, yeah, yeah, find of, six in, action steps. In, yeah, yeah. Instead of research, it's like just do the just do the thing. Just do something that you need to do. Um, get that website up. Get the fucking product. Whatever, whatever it is. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you're working on an e-com store and you don't have like a functioning shop up it's like it's just crazy because it's so easy to do that it's it's so insanely easy but people people actually love you know the you know the safest place in the world to live the safest Where? place in the world to live is in limbo Ooh. it's between it's between heaven and hell because hell is the bottom of the vibrational scale hell is depression my life's going nowhere this is pointless i hate myself i'm doomed everything's doomed that's hell and then heaven unfortunately requires a shit ton of work it takes a lot of fucking work to get to heaven to get the body that creates heaven to have the game and the action and the courage and the confidence and the and everything that creates actual heaven is extremely difficult so limbo is super pleasant I'm I, I'm working on this. I'm on this course. I'm in this program right now. That da 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 da. It's non-committal. No, you're not, bitch. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's non-committal. It's this sort of safe place where you don't have to admit that you're in hell, but you don't have to work hard enough to be in heaven. So most people are just in limbo, and you guys are just going to stay in limbo until ultimately you do die. That's that's basically <laughs> the way this is gonna go. Um, unless you do something insane to, to shake it up and yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, like, obviously I recommend that these, these, these guys do, do coaching with me, of course. Um, you know, sometimes I, I do forget even as an entrepreneur that these, these podcasts and these things ultimately are supposed to be selling something, I, I'm, but I'm not really selling anything today. I mean, I'm just telling guys to, to suck it the fuck up. You know, I didn't just start doing all of this because I don't care about people. I really do care about people. I want to see people win. Nothing gets my dick harder than, you know, a student coming to me or even somebody who never paid me anything, but they're just 
I'll get a long DM here and there or a long email. I'm just like, dude, I've been watching your stuff for five fucking years. I started out doing this, dated this girl for two years. Now I've got my fucking wife. I've got this chick who da da da. It's like, I want you guys to do some shit, man. Because the more that you guys do, yeah. the more that I get to have a hard dick. And that's, that's what's important here. One other uh, good little practical thing here. This worked for me is, you know, I, I always love the, the concept of massive action, right? Like, to in order to take some new you, some new version of you seriously, you just kind of jump on some train of thought that you're going to stick on for a, while, for a while. And, uh, you know, I would get like mm-hmm. a notebook or something, and I would just kind of track my days or my weeks. Sometimes I would think about things weekly or monthly or daily, and I would read a book at least. I would go try some new thing, and, you know, maybe at the first page of that notebook, I would write, you know, where do I want to be in a year? Where do I want to be in six months? And it's so crazy because what happens is your brain just starts figuring out how to solve these problems faster. And if you're really experienced, you realize that you could do some of these things even faster. Like, oh, yeah, you know, I think a a year would be realistic. And then, like, it's like, well, what if that was six months? How fast could you – how does your brain think when you have to do that in six months? And you're like, well, I still could get it done, but I have to do this, this, and this. What about three months? What about a week? And it's like you – maybe you can't get it done in a week, but, like, your brain still is – for the first time in problem solving mode and you're alive, you know, and you start just mm-hmm. thinking about like how to practically solve things. It's time and results, right? It's just all practical. And, and like we said, speed is everything. I honestly, I love hearing you talk about speed, like speed to me. You talk about speed to me is like crack. Like it's always so good when you talk about it because I mean, you got, you get into things early, right? Like I remember like so many times at evolution daily, like things we didn't have to necessarily start doing right away, but we did. You know, we got on the podcast, like we, like so much stuff. We just did it early and we got in it. And it's like, you know, now after COVID, think about how many people wish they started a podcast, but they never got around to it. And it's like, all we did was we just fucking got together with two mics and fucking said, you, 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 you literally, I'm sure you did this. I'm sure you literally said, what's the bare minimum what I need? Two microphones and a device to plug them in, a battery pack, and we're good to go for an hour. And then a place to upload, right? I got to learn about Lipson or whatever. It's like... It mm-hmm. was that simple. And so I think people, they're so indoctrinated. I think it's from school and, and like the government. I, I honestly think it's society, but it's like they get indoctrinated by their sameness in life every day. And they, they forget that these things are so easy. And for every like Aaron who starts a podcast very rapidly, there's a million people who have a million thoughts about it. They have to think about it. They have to think about it. It's like, Oh, but like I should like go watch an hour long video of what some guy on the internet I've never met thinks about like what the best mics to use are. And then like you just do all this stuff and then you're like, Ooh, I'm hungry, let me go eat instead of like just making sure I get the result in the next hour. It's like you just are not practically making results happen. <laughs> like <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's it's frustrating for me to watch like my friends and stuff who aren't as practical. It's funny, I've been trying to get my New Jersey friends over here to Ohio to just visit me for, like, years. And I said, what is it going to take? Like, what do you guys need to do? And they're like, we're retarded. Like, we don't know. Like, we, <laughs> like they literally said that. They're like, we don't know, like, how to fucking, like, manage it. Like, we, you, we always rely on you to, like, set things up. Like, we're retarded. You think we're going to, like, figure this out? Like, we're not. <laughs> and it's like, most people are retarded. That's the answer. <laughs> you got to get not retarded. Have they ever, have they ever flown before? <laughs> They've done travels and stuff. I think I think uh, they've done a lot of stuff based that, that I think I've initiated, and a few of them have more initiative than others. But um, it's you know how it is, Aaron. Like it's work to call people and set up stuff and see what time someone's off work, and like you know, it's like it it does take effort to like plan, right? So I don't blame people for that. But um, you know, and again, I always joke with them about it. But like, yeah, I mean, you know, people in general do need to learn how to like plan more and like get results more. Yeah, you've complimented me on yeah, resourcefulness. I never even thought about it yeah. when you brought it up. You were like, you were like, you're one of the most resourceful people I ever met. I was like, what do you mean? You're like, dude, if I send you to FedEx, like you're gonna get the thing done. You're not gonna like come back and be like, oh, they didn't have the paper. You're gonna be like, oh, you drove to the other store and you like got it done. To me, that makes perfect sense. I think to a lot of people, they're just so used to being either told what to do or listening to their parents or listening to their friends or what do people think. There's so much thought. That it never can just be like a quick, fast, practical thing that gets the result in a quick amount of time. 
Get get one of yeah. these people. Get a timer. I live my life off timer. Set a twenty minute timer and an expectation. In twenty minutes, I'm gonna get this thing done. This thing's gonna happen, right? If you're reading a book, do pages by a certain amount of minutes. Like I'm gonna do ten minutes, a, ten pages a, every thirty minutes or whatever the fuck. I don't know how good thirty minutes of ten, like whatever. But like the point is, it's just like make time and a result a thing in your life and and get practical. Start small and then you'll start to see you can just easily, easily build a e-commerce business or anything else you want to do. But you got to get practical. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get those uh, get those New Jersey cucks out there. Get them to, to come visit. The fuck? That's crazy. Yeah, if you're watching well, these get... fuckers, figure it out. Yeah, what the fuck's... Like, make them do that. That's <laughs> crazy. Remember we had a student who did a boot camp and he was like, how do I fly? And we were like, what? And he's like, how do I fly? Dude. Like, what do you... He's like, how do I take a, a plane? And I'm like, the f- I think you're the one that did the call with him. It was like years ago, but it's like, what the fuck? So you had, you had to like teach a guy how to fly. So here's the website. What you do is you enter the city, like all this shit. It's fucking, it's crazy. It's wild out here. But, but I swear to God, it potentially, and this is no fault to him. If he's listening to this, uh, which he is a big fan of the stuff. He probably is. So no fault to him. There's a lot of people out there that if we just were like, yo, figure it out, they just wouldn't have. They just would not have figured it out. It would have been like, I looked at flights and they're two thousand dollars. Uh, did you filter out first class? Oh, I didn't realize. Like, people are just so stupid. And you guys, you you're not actually yeah. stupid. I just want to give a quick caveat to that. You're not actually stupid. You are just not resourceful. There are just so many basic. I just there's just sometimes when people tell me that they don't know a thing, there's like a fact of life or something that someone will not know. And I'm like, how do you how how have you how do you live each day not knowing this thing? And then each and then and because it's so prevalent in the world and everything. So it's like each day that you yeah. hear about that thing, you just choose to continue not knowing about it. Like, what the yeah. fuck are we? We're not even in the same world. I want to say something crazy. It's going to sound crazy, but it's not. I truly think that the single greatest skill that you can have, and it's the easiest thing in the world, by the way, the single greatest skill is also the easiest skill to learn, but very few people have it. Single greatest skill you can have today in this world is the ability to go on Google and YouTube and use it to figure out something that you previously did not know. Like, I know that sounds crazy, but like people need that skill. Way more than they than they. I, I I thought I assumed the whole world knew how to do that, but like, it's actually. I think that people really do need that skill more. They need to be using yeah, those tools for what they are and recognizing yeah, how powerful that is. That, that you have the power to, at your fingertips to literally get access to anything you want, and like they're still in this. I mean, look, man, humanity for the last hundred years didn't have access to this. I get it. We're running that same pattern if we're still walking forward with the belief that like i can't get access to information easily you have google it, you have it you have it all yeah 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 and i'm not you know and, and i'm not saying i'm not gonna sit here and say that everybody needs to be always like indulging in the the treasures of history and you know listening to <laughs> auto audio books on the ottoman empire and all of that i'm not saying that <laughs> but yeah it's like Dude, we were just in a fucking, you know, two years ago now, close to close to two years, like a year and a half ago. We we're just in like a gas station parking lot watching videos on how to fucking switch out the cord on a Jeep Wrangler so we could buy it off of this guy in the parking lot and, in, and uninstall it from his Jeep and then install it onto ours. We're just like mechanics because we're just sitting there like fucking figuring this out on YouTube with tools and all this shit. And mo and you know who would have done that? Like nobody, nobody would have fucking done that. People are just so insane to not realize, just like you said, this very basic skill of like watching and learning things on the internet in real time in order to solve a problem. People just would have given up. Oh, we're fucked. Also, which is just, just isn't going to happen. Also, I know you're going to be nodding your head to this, but you know, there's some rural rur- rural places in Ohio, right? that I've visited mm-hmm. and I've been, especially on my deliveries and stuff, you'd be surprised for anybody who lives in the city or a suburb, all these people know how to fix cars. 
Mm -hmm. All of them. And and tractors, they know how to do it. And and it's crazy. You would think that's insane. But they all know how to do it. And it's because when you're just out there and you don't have the internet and you're farming and you're living off the land and you're trying to run this farm business or whatever, like you are, if your car breaks, like you have to fix it. They don't have AAA. They're not buying parts. They're They're fixing their own shit. And so that is the survival challenging yourself every day mentality that human beings are used to being in that I think society has deprived us a little bit of. And so now we have these guys that are born. They don't know how to balance their checking account or they, they're like normal things, change a tire, like whatever. Um, you know, you see that stuff too with like dads, dads show you how to tie your tie and how to shave and how to change a tire. That's what the dad's for. Like he's there to teach you how to do shit. Right. And it's like, mm-hmm. you know, Evolution Daily, we're here. We're your father figures. We're going to teach you how to fucking <laughs> do practical <Yeah>. shit. <laughs> we need to do a. We need to do a five day. We need to do a five day hybrid version of man camp where it's not quite out in the wilderness like I originally tried to do, but it's just like in Miami or something for five days. And like part of it is like, yeah, we have a mechanic come out and show everybody how to change a tire, and like we've got like a. You know, we've got like a car up on some cinder blocks, and we're like everybody's practicing changing tires and shit. Like, and then also think, there's game, and then there's fighting. Yeah, go ahead. Talk, talk for like a minute too, just to really hammer it home. Why? I think somebody's at home right now going, "Why a tire?" Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, it's it's extremely. Basic. Why does this matter? Yeah, yeah. So, so essentially why so many of you are lacking any confidence in this world and the reason why you're hiding and you, you, you just want to be a background character is because confidence comes from competence. And so right now there's this very, very long, long list of basic fundamental actions and, and I don't want to say tools, but there's just actions that right now so many of you cannot perform you're incompetent you cannot change the tire (laughs) you cannot approach the girl you cannot uh fucking go by the little tool to fix your um to to fix your garbage disposal you know you don't even know which circuits to break on the fucking circuit breaker if a light goes out you're calling maintenance i mean you're you're you guys are many of you are pathetic and so because you're so incompetent moving through this world you probably even suck at your job you're so incompetent that there is no way in hell that you can have any confidence. And so therefore the quickest way to having some confidence is becoming competent. And so, you know, right now maybe you're struggling with chicks, but learning to change a tire, learning how to YouTube things like Alpha Chad's talking about, just learning some fucking things might all of a sudden put you in the giant eagle or the H E B or the Kroger and the Whole Foods. You see a bitch and you just go, dude, I'm that guy now. I'm like a competent man. I identify as being competent. So therefore now I identify as being confident and I'm going to talk to this bitch. And I want to say this. It's not about the tire. It's about the mentality. I was uh, delivering on my job and I saw a dad pull his dork son out into the road and basically made him work on a car i saw this happen it was awesome he was like yeah and then when you when you when you need to fix this you're gonna go do this he's like literally he was giving him like a little man camp basically Mm. his dad had had enough of his son probably staying inside playing games (laughs) you know and he was probably like hey i'm gonna make this kid learn how to fucking change an alternator or some shit and, it, and the kid wasn't like being forced to do something he didn't want to do. He would he seemed to like want to learn this as well. But it was you know he was willing. But it was um, it was cool to see, you know. But just imagine you know when you're when you were if you were young, instead of always having it easy, you got somebody shoving you into the wilderness. What are you laughing about? I want to hear what you're saying. What are you? What? No, like, you yeah, laughing? yeah, exactly. No, I was just thinking like, <laughs> I'm not gonna let this man camp idea die. I will make this a reality eventually because I sure. just, yeah, fuck cause, it. Cause dude, especially like if you're like a big part of it, like, dude, I, I know, I know a lot of the mistakes that I made last time and, yeah. and I know all of the mistakes. Actually, I know how to make man camp happen. I really do. 
Um, Guys, this lives in Aaron's brain rent free. He is so upset that he didn't make this idea work the last time. He is so fucking <laughs> not happy about yeah. that. Yeah, and for everybody that that you know has has ever wondered, because you know there's things that I've addressed. You know, we have like this tight inner circle in the mastermind, and sometimes I tell them things, and I forget that like not everyone knows because I really only told yeah. the mastermind. But you know, at the, at the end of the day, man camp was just a it was just a business failure, and that's okay. Like I've had many business failures over the years. Every business does, but I just did not market it well i i tried to charge too much there was nothing appealing about it whatsoever it was like hey give us two thousand dollars and we're gonna take your phone tie you to a tree we're gonna make you we're gonna make you fight another guy like the the marketing dude and i look back at like the sales the page drop. and everything it was absolutely <laughs> insane it was it was so crazy <laughs> Um, the way, yeah, the value proposition was, I mean, <laughs> dude, there's going to be like mud and shit. You guys are going to have to like use sticks to knock each other <laughs> off of a balance beam and pay and pay $2,000 also, by the way, to be, to be able to do all of this. And, yeah. uh, and you know, at the end of the day, there was extremely, extremely low interest. <laughs> And then I'm, and then I'm finding myself hitting up like past boot camp students, like, "Hey man, I noticed you haven't signed up for man camp yet, <laughs> dude." Yeah, uh. I think, dude, I think I still, I think I still have. A, I, I guarantee you, I still have an email. I tried to, I emailed David Goggins' team. I was gonna try to get Goggins to, uh, oh, to wow. come to to come to man camp because I was like. You know, I'm like, that's a good selling point that I could probably, I could probably yeah. get, you know, get going. But, uh, yeah, there was a lot of mistakes, but one day we do need to do a man camp type situation and I could see it working eventually. The way that it needs to be structured and then we'll get back to the podcast is that it, it's all about the mentality and the growth. And, you know, we can have mm -hmm. footage of tug of war in the mud and stuff like that, but I don't think anybody's going to want to come for the tug of war if you just sell them on the tug of war. Yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, it was so <laughs> insane. And I think I was just on a lot of Adderall at the time. <laughs> dude, you were. Dude. You were your heart was going yeah. twice as fast. Yeah, you I told think I me. was like I was zooted on Adderall at the time. And uh, and so dude, I even was like just planning out like how we're gonna rent buses to like shuttle people from the airport to the <laughs> field that I rented and lost around like like fifteen hundred bucks, I couldn't get back from the whole the whole yeah. thing. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I was planning that out. I was looking into like local catering companies, like how are we gonna get food out to these guys? It would have been a complete disaster. And you know what's even funnier to think about? <laughs> it's even funnier to think about it like somewhat working. So it just ends up being like four guys, and we're just like. <laughs> <laughs> like spraying dude i was saying at the time that we were gonna like wake them up by hosing them down in their tent <laughs> like a drill sergeant like you're trying to yeah. like be tough and like get them to wake up <laughs> yeah like six in the morning like going in there with a hose and just like or like a bucket of water like splashing them which which again, if there's, you know, say like a hundred guys or something, that's pretty badass. <laughs> but there's just like yeah. four, four dudes. That there's just one guy, them. like you and I are bullying one guy out yeah. of the field. <laughs> dude, some like dude, rich, like point. cool guy. <laughs> some like cool rich guy that we're bullying. <laughs> I'm there too with like a little whip or something. <laughs> Like, yeah, move faster. <laughs> dude, dude, I just thought of something so funny. Remember, like, <laughs> yeah, dude, you're getting pulled on a sled behind them and hitting them with a whip. Oh dude, I just, I just thought of something. Do you remember, uh, do you remember Max from Chicago? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. He was jacked and huge dude, and alpha. <laughs> dude, like, at man camp, like, Max fights <laughs> Dude, 
Max is like fighting back and winning. So like we've <laughs> lost control of the event. Like Max has beaten me up and you're now like running through the woods. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, bitch, like, keep pushing that fucking bag of sand. <laughs> what the fuck you say to me? Yeah. <laughs> We've lost full control of the event. Like, Max has, like, pummeled me. Uh, that's, that's so, so great. Man can't pull out. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to happen. It's just got to be it's got to be at an actual campground and it has to be like way cheaper. And here's the deal. Here's here's also the key to the success of man camp is making it actually very cheap to the point where it's almost like a break even event for the purpose of being able to ideally get like 20 guys. Right. Yeah. That's like the big deal, because if we can get like 20 guys and then some of the events of it are filmed and now there's sort of like great promotional material for a future man camp where now it is like a proven concept. We are charging more. We're getting testimonials, that sort of thing. Um, then it could turn into like a whole island and it just becomes like survivor. It's like, all right, everybody, you're now like uh, dropped. <laughs> all right, so you're going to be just dropped on the beach with nothing and just like try to survive. <laughs> Dude, they don't this even reminds me. me. Of, <laughs> this reminds me of what? a time when uh, uh, it's fucked up, man. I'm going to end this fucking podcast on a fucked up story. My oh, mom no, went to prison. It? My mom went to mm. prison one time and she was For a what? hoarder. She had a million cats. Mm. And we had all these cats to feed, and my mom's in jail. <laughs> and so my grandfather and I, that's the we, had to, like, take these cats to the shelter, but they wouldn't take them. They're like, that's $50 a pop. Like, you, you can't take, like, cats to shelter for free. Like, you don't just get to drop off 20 cats. What? And so <laughs> my grandpa and I, were, we were like, okay, well, what's, like, the next best thing? Well, you know, they're animals. Animals live outside. You know, let's, like, take all these cat carriers and cats and, like, let them go in the woods. And, you know, at the time, like, I thought it was a good idea. You know, we ended up doing it. And then, like, I told, like, my friend about it. And he was like, bro, what the fuck? Like, they're they're going to die. Like, what are you doing? Like, you've been training these cats their, their whole lives to, like, live off canned food. Like, they don't know how to hunt. Like, you just killed, like, 20 <laughs> cats. And, like, I, I might have actually <laughs> and yeah. i'm really sorry and it weighs on my mind all the time it was years ago but dude like i'm just thinking like these guys who just haven't lived on an island and know nothing about like fishing or anything and then we just throw them on the island they know nothing they know nothing they're just yeah. gonna be just like those cats like they're just gonna die <laughs> Ugh. Fuck. There's no point of contact or anything. Like they don't even know if we're <laughs> there. They're just like, like Freddy's just laying there with like severe stomach cramps from three days of starvation. Um, someone dude, gets scurvy. My, yeah, from my, they're killing each other. They're like eating one of the other guys on the fucking man <laughs> camp. Um, <laughs> dude, from my understanding though, cats, cats are like pigs. Like they, they turn wild and their instincts kick in pretty quick i don't think those cats died that's what i've been saying so my friends have no, been like for, clowning me for years real, no that's yeah. real shit cats and pigs if you put them in the wild within like two or three days they are like a different animal that's real shit wow that's cool yeah dogs it's not the same dogs are they don't turn into wolves or some shit dogs are fucked but i'm pretty wow. sure all those cats probably just fucked like crazy had a ton of kittens and shit they're probably just still out there you should go to where you dumped them <laughs> i had a um i had a guy that i worked with in my old jobs and he was a he was a hunter he would go into the woods and he said that he would see cats all the time and i said why is <laughs> that and he said well people get rid of them there so um so i feel less bad that other people do that and it's nice to know that the uh, you know they uh they survive on their own that was totally intentional. I totally knew that cats do that. Oh, when we yeah. Did that. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Never had any doubt. Yeah, guys. So, I mean, look, you know, at the end of the day, um, I don't know, dude. I mean, just just try to get it together in some capacity. I, I would like to help you. 
Um, I would like to coach you guys. You guys can uh, email me. You can come to uh, coachaaronalexander.com. Go to the YouTube channel, find the links. You can DM me on Instagram, Aaron Alexander Official. I will be your mentor. Uh, I've mentored a lot of guys. I've had a lot of guys have have massive success through my mentorship. I've even had, dude, I've had a couple guys now, like, hire me just for business. I don't even, like, we don't even talk game. I had a guy with, like, a serious long-term girlfriend that he's going to marry who I just, like, helped him with his online business. It's like, you know, so I can help you guys with whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> that's good marketing, right? Like whatever you need, like I'll just, uh, just hit me up, but you need your alternator changed. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'll do like odd jobs around the house, like whatever. Oh, and if any of you want to rent my apartment for two months in Austin, uh, this spring, let me know. Also, I'm renting out my apartment Ooh. for two whole months. I'll give Ooh. you guys a good deal. So you guys can reach out and let me know. Um, and, uh, I'll rent it out to you that's guys right by so. the bars. Oh yeah, it's a great it's a great location. I mean, it's a great apartment. I'm even gonna charge less in my actual rent. I just wanna. I'm going to Europe for two whole months, and I just want to recoup wow. some some money from it. I'm just hoping to get a little something from the empty apartment, and then ideally, you know, someone that wants to experience Austin for a little bit gets some value by being able to stay in a great location. So, um, you guys can hit me up if you want to rent my apartment. If you need anything done around the house, I'll, I'll paint. <laughs> Uh, I can fill in fill holes in the wall. <laughs> DM Aaron Gamecation if you're interested in uh, the apartment. Yeah, yeah, do that. So, all right, guys, um, thank you for tuning in. This has been this was a good episode. I feel like it was a little rocky at the beginning. We need to come in with um, we need to come in with uh, a, a better plan. I, I think I think I'm very good at winging it most of the time, but I am sleep deprived today, so the winging was it was all right. I brought the ice. How, my plan was the ice. Yes, that was good. That was good. I do have That's actually a, a podcast, a good podcast topic I want to do for for the next episode we do, and it's basically all of the byproducts of game. So sort of like what are you getting outside of bitches? Courage. I wrote down these are the talking points. I came up with seven so far. Courage. Abundance, leadership, life over decay, friendships, sharpens the brain, deep, uh, deep internal work on rejection and acceptance. So I want to end up doing like a whole podcast on kind of like, I guess just speaking to that voice that I hear often, usually just online though, from people of like, you know, like, dude, like really like. I mean, who cares about getting pussy so much? Like, is getting pussy really your whole life and all this mm. stuff? It's like, bro, like, to me, game has just been, like, almost like a borderline, like, religious endeavor outside of pussy and fucking and everything. It's like, it's such a, it's such a vehicle to so many other aspects of life. And it's a vehicle that, again, is so fucking available to everybody. Right now, I don't care where you bitches live. I lived in Mainville, Ohio for a while, and I got grocery store lays. Look up Mainville, Ohio, you dumb fucks, and then talk to me about your small town. So, and I have, I have the, the guy I was staying with, he knows I had grocery store lays too, so all documentable. Um, <laughs> don't talk to me I about a fucking fuck. sm- Don't talk to me about a small fucking town. So, so that, this, this is the thing, is again, you know, all this stuff we talk about, action, awakening the brain, like getting out there, being somebody, taking care of something. Like, wherever you live right now, there is a grocery store. There is a mall. There are women around you in some capacity, and you're, you've been listening to this podcast and the channel and everything. You can make the decision to go to that Whole Foods today and fucking sack up and, and try to have this mental war to overcome your resistance or whatever the fuck and just do an approach. And so that vehicle is kind of always there and available for you guys. There's a guy in the mastermind just two days ago. Don't hit me up about the mastermind, guys. I'm not currently accepting new members. But he said, um, I haven't been approaching much lately. Just did my first grocery store approach in months today. I forgot how great it makes me feel, even when it doesn't go anywhere. I felt inspired because I was at another store before that and saw a dude pick up a chick and make solid plans for a date. So this dude, it doesn't even sound like he was with a wing. So he did an approach basically because he saw some other guy fucking spitting game picking up a chick and he was like damn i'm actually out here like learning this shit i need to go do this so you guys gotta just suck it up and go do it 
DM me, Aaron Alexander Official. I'll coach you. Um, you guys can rent my apartment, whatever you guys need. So you let me know. But <laughs> all right, Alpha Chad, uh, we'll do another episode here soon, and uh, we'll talk to all you guys later. Peace.